In this lesson, we're going to talk about slope-intercept form, which is one of the three forms of linear equations, and it's called slope-intercept because it includes the slope and the y-intercept in the equation. And the equation is y equals mx plus b. So you see m here, which is a coefficient of x, m is the slope of the line. And the constant at the end represented by b is the y-intercept. So the reason why slope-intercept form of a linear equation is important and useful is because it is very easy to graph a linear equation that is written in slope-intercept form because all you really need are the slope and the y-intercept. Take for example this equation here, y equals 2x minus 4. I want to graph this line on the coordinate plane. Now, earlier on, you learned to do this by making a function table where you would pick a bunch of points for x and then plug them into the equation and solve for y. But when you're using slope-intercept form, it is a lot easier to graph without having to do a function table. And all you need to do is to identify the slope and the y-intercept. So the slope, which is m, is the coefficient of x, so the number in front of x, which in this case is positive 2. And the y-intercept, represented by b, is the constant at the end, so the y-intercept in this case is negative 4. Now that I have those two pieces of information, I can graph the line. We are going to start, we're going to begin with the y-intercept. So what we're going to do is, since the y-intercept here is negative 4, I'm going to go to my y-axis and I'm going to put a point on negative 4. Now make sure you're doing this on the y-axis. A common error that students make is that they put the y-intercept on the x-axis. No, it is the y-intercept, so it has to go on the y-axis. Once you've placed the y-intercept, you now need to move the way the slope tells you to move. Remember that slope is a fraction, which is rise over run. And the rise tells you how the line moves up or down, and the run tells you how the line moves from left to right. So here, this whole number 2 comes from the fraction 2 over 1. And since it's positive, we know that this line is going to move up. So this fraction 2 over 1 tells me that I'm going to move up two steps and to the right one step. So if we look at that here and we start at our y-intercept, so I'm going to move up two steps, one, two, and to the right one step, and that is the location of another point on this line. Now all you really need in order to create a line are two points and a straight edge, but if I have room, I always like to keep moving the way the slope tells me because I've seen that the more points I have, the easier it is for me to line up my straight edge and make sure I get a good line. So I'm going to keep moving the way the slope tells me. So I'm going to go up one, two, and to the right one, and there's another point. Again, one, two, and to the right one. And let's do it one more time. 1, 2, and to the right 1. And so now I'm going to line up my straight edge and draw my line. Now notice that I am not just connecting the dots. I am extending my line all the way throughout the graph to the full extent of the graph. And so here we go. This line is the line which is represented by the equation y equals 2x minus 4 because it has a y-intercept of negative 4 and a slope of 2. All right, let's take a look at another example here. y equals negative half x plus 7. And I want to graph this, so I need to identify the slope and the y-intercept. So the slope is the coefficient of x. So we see here we have a negative half in front of x. So that's my slope is negative half. 
and my y-intercept is 7, positive 7. So now I'm going to go to my y-axis and I'm going to place a point on positive 7. And now I need to move the way my slope tells me to move. So we know that we have positive slopes and negative slopes. So all the positive or negative does is affect how you move for the rise for the top number. Okay. It does not affect the run. The run is always moving to the right because that's how we read graphs the same way we read the English language. So we always move to the right. You never move to the left unless you are in a situation where you're running out of room and you have to backtrack. And I'll cover that in another video. So this slope here, negative one half, since a negative slope goes downward, this is telling me to go down one step and to the right two steps. So that's what I'm going to do. So I'm going to start at my y-intercept. I'm going to go down one step and to the right two steps. I'll place my new point. So do this a few times. Now, you don't have to draw these pink squigglies you see me drawing. I'm just doing this so that you can visualize me counting out the steps from the slope. So down one step to the right two. And let's do one more. Down one step to the right two. Now I'm going to take my straight edge, line it up with the points, and draw my line. And it should look something like this. Remember that you extend the line all the way. And there you go. All right, let's take a look at this next example here. Y equals X minus 1. We need to identify the slope and the Y-intercept. Now, on an equation like this, some students might look here and say, well, there's no number in front of X, so there's no slope. But we have to remember that all variables have a coefficient. If you don't see one, it's the invisible 1. So the slope of this line is a positive 1. Same way as if, if you were looking at another equation, if this equation was written like this, y equals negative x minus 1, there would still be that invisible 1 here in between the negative and the x, which would make the slope of this line a negative 1. Back on to this line here. So we saw that the slope is a positive 1, and our y-intercept is a negative 1. So we're going to go to our y-axis and we're going to place a point on negative 1. And then this slope is a positive 1. That comes from the fraction 1 over 1. And since it's positive, we're moving up 1 and right 1. And so this time, I'm not going to put the little pink squigglies. So I'm just going to move up 1 and right 1. And here's my new point. Up 1, right 1. Up 1, right 1. Up 1, right 1. And hopefully you see the pattern. What happens when you have a slope of 1. So we're going to take our straight edge, line up our points, and draw our line. And there you go. Now sometimes you want to graph a linear equation, but it's not in slope-intercept form. For example, here we have 3x plus 6y equals 12. This is actually in standard form. But in order to graph this line using slope and intercept, I need to rewrite it in slope-intercept form. So what does that mean? Remember when we talk with equations about forms, we're talking about everything being in the exact spot where it belongs. So for example, remembering that the equal sign is the center of all equations, okay? We need the y needs to be to the left of the equal sign, and then to the right of the equal sign, we have the rest of the equation in this order, mx plus b. So if you look here, we see that y is to the left of this equal sign, but so is 3x, and 3x does not belong on the left-hand side, it belongs on the right-hand side. 12 is my constant, and it does belong here, so it's in the right spot. So 3x is in the wrong place. So we need to take this 3x and move it where it belongs, which would be right here in between the equal sign and the 12. So what's one way we can do that? Well, 
We can do that by thinking about elimination. In other words, if I want to eliminate 3x from the left, all I have to do is subtract 3x, because 3x minus 3x is 0. It's gone. And with equations, whatever you do to one side, you've got to do to the other side. So I subtract 3x from the other side as well. Here, this cancels. This gives me here 6y equals, and now I'm going to write this, and I'm going to make sure I write it in this order, mx plus b. That means negative 3x, that comes first, plus 12. Now, I need to get rid of the 6, because slope-intercept form has a 1y, not a 6y. So that means I have to divide everything by 6. So 6y divided by 6, that is y. Over here, negative 3x divided by 6. What's going to happen is the x is just going to slide over to the side, and then we're going to take this fraction. So this is the fraction negative 3 over 6, which we can simplify to negative half. So that is the slope here, negative half x, and then 12 divided by 6 is 2. And so now this is this same equation here, just written in slope-intercept form. So this equation here, 3x plus 6y equals 12, which is in standard form, is equivalent to this equation here, which is written in slope-intercept form, and reads y equals negative half x plus 2. So they are the same equation, just written in a different form. Now, there's another way that I can make sure that this 3x ends up in the correct spot. So I can just take this 3x and drag it over and move it over and put it where it belongs. We can do that when we are working with equations. The only thing that we must remember is the following rule. Whenever you take something from one side of an equation across the equal sign to the other side, you have to change the sign. So if I take this 3x from the left side of this equation and I drag it across the equal sign and I'm going to drop it here on the right side of the equation, then what's going to happen is it's going to go from being a positive 3x and it's going to become a negative 3x. If you remember, when I subtracted 3x on both sides, that's what I ended up with. So that's how this works. So let's go ahead and do that. When I drag that 3x over, now I'm going to get 6y equals, now this positive 3x over here is a negative 3x plus 12. And then the rest is the same as I just showed. So I'm going to divide by 6. And I get y equals, again, this is going to become negative half x plus 2. Let's identify our slope. Our slope is negative half. And our y-intercept is 2. So we're going to go to the y-axis, and we're going to put a point on 2. Then we're going to move the way the slope tells us, which this is negative. So that means we're going to go down 1 and right 2. So down 1 and right 2. So that gives me a new point right here. Down 1, right 2. Down 1, right 2 down one, right two, and I have room for one more. Down one, right two. Then I take my straight edge, line up my points, and I draw my line. All right, let's take a look at one last example here. Negative five X minus two Y equals eight. Once again, I wanna graph this using slope intercept. The problem is that this equation is not in slope-intercept form. And remember, I need to convert it, and I need to take this equation and rewrite it so that it follows this form, where y is by itself to the left of the equal sign, and then to the right, we have mx plus b. So I have to analyze this equation here and figure out what's in the wrong spot. Well, 8 is my constant. It's to the right. It's where it belongs. And negative 2y is to the left of the equal sign, it's where it belongs. Who's in the wrong spot? The negative 5x. It's on the left, and it should be on the right. So what am I going to do about it? I'm just going to take it and drag it over and put it where it belongs, which is right here, in between the equal sign and the 8. What do we have to remember when we do that is, whenever you take 
a term from one side of an equation and move it to the other side of the equation, you have to change the sign. So when this negative 5x moves from the left side to the right side, it becomes a positive 5x. And it looks like this. Negative 2y equals 5x plus 8. So now we need to divide everything by negative 2 in order to get y alone. So divide everything by negative 2 here. And we get y equals, over here, this 5x divided by negative 2, the x is going to slide onto the side, and we're going to keep this fraction, which is negative 5 over 2. And it's okay that this is an improper fraction, as long as it's in simplest form, because remember, slope is a fraction. So finally here, 8 divided by negative 2, that is negative 4. So our slope is negative 4. 5 over 2, and our y-intercept is negative 4. So now I'm going to go to the y-axis, and I'm going to place my y-intercept at negative 4. Then I'm going to look over at my slope, and I'm going to move the way the slope tells me. It's negative, so this means I'm going to move down 5 and right 2. So starting from my y-intercept, down 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and right 2, 1, 2. And it looks here like I only have room for one other point, so that's all I need. I'm going to line up my straight edge and draw my line. All right, so I hope this lesson helped you to understand using slope-intercept form to graph linear equations.